Hello, one and all. Welcome to the Ear Earners podcast. Here are your hosts, Trevor and Brock. Hey. How's it going? Wow, what a formal intro. It was very formal. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. I thought so, too. So I get so nervous because I'm not, I don't get really get nervous, but uh, uh, I'm just like, whoa, are you recording yet? No? No? Is he? Is he started? And, and there needs and this to probably be it. a little bit more better of a, of a process with it too maybe getting it down more to like a science i know some people have like a count off where it's like you know five four three two and then they air whereas me i just hit the record button and just say hey we're going i mean it's funny i, I like it because it, it I, keeps you on the edge of your seat it's like yeah it's like the like art you know when you just feel like you walked into our world yeah and we're in the middle of a conversation and you're like all right, I'm fucking feeling it. Now's the time to mm-hmm. hit the button. Yeah. Hit the button. Hit the... Yep. If you can find the button, hit it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, jeez. There's a funny TikTok that I saw. It was uh, a bunch of men, like... <laughs> I forgot what it was mm-hmm. going through, but, like... It was a woman talking about how you find... Uh, <sighs> There's just there's a thing on a woman that starts with the letter C that people have a hard time finding, and it's called the uh, catalytic converter, and it goes to the next person, and they're like, "Oh, I actually think you said catalytic 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 converter. I think what you meant to say was," uh, and then they keep it keep it going. Huh? I've not seen this. I, I badly I'm badly explaining badly this. Yeah. I'm just glad you're watching TikToks. Uh, I I don't have a TikTok. I just kind of why not? I. Pfft. I don't know. Because they're hacking our phones. No, it's just the youth thing, I guess. That's what the youths oh, are doing. Oh, fucking hell. And, I don't, and, and, and that's also where, like, I like. I think it's funny, the uh, the the TikTok stuff you find where it's just, like, uh, people strung out on drugs with uh, TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> I don't even know what this thing does. It's, and I invented the fucking thing. <laughs> it's not even a youth thing. It's just, uh, yeah. just get the, get the app. Yeah, I don't know. I, I gotta do it. I think. Everyone thinks dancing and a bunch of stupid, you know, Zoomer shit. It is Zoomy. It it's not like okay. Depending on, it's it's. I've never seen a better algorithm for. But that's the thing I've heard with TikTok. It's like you never know what you're gonna get. Like you might open up a TikTok and then like you might like scroll up and then you see like a dead body or some shit. Have you ever had that happen to you? A re- not a real one. Oh, okay. Is that a thing? <laughs> I think I guess. Just find corpses on their phone. I guess I'm. I, I I think I'm getting the same media coverage of like this TikTok to say like a boomer probably gets. Yeah. And like yeah. I see their posts. These TikTokers. Yeah, they're like this is all drugs and yeah. sex and all this, and I'm like, why isn't it giving me this? Yeah. <laughs> I, I want this. Yeah. Like my 15 year old. That's went why on I got the and, fucking app. Yeah, within 30 minutes, they were exposed to drugs and alcohol and sex. Where is it? And I'm like, I keep getting these fucking. <laughs> Uh, these yeah i'm just getting like old men saying weird things like that you know where's the sex and the drugs right yeah <laughs> <laughs> i could take a turn yeah <laughs> <laughs> what was the site what was it that um i don't i don't know if it was the tiktoks vine? or if it was uh was it vine i know vine was before tiktok um and i used to love watching vines i didn't have a vine but i loved watching vines and i still you know like textbook you, chug right here oh. bring back vine it's tiktok I'm a, Okay. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? I don't know if it was like Snapchat. I can't remember what it was, but like it was like something that was leading um, some kids on like a scavenger hunt type of thing. And when they did that, you, you look like you know what I'm talking about. It's they, like Geo. Yeah. Geo, yeah. My geo ex tracker, and I did that. Treasure. Oh, okay. You guys actually did that? Yeah, but we didn't find it. We went to like a couple parking lots and I was like, don't you think this is a little weird? Was it its own separate app? Yeah, she oh. was, was kind of into it. And, and then we, so we like went like a Kohl's parking lot and tried to find this like scavenger hunt thing. I must, yeah. But and I, I said, you know, someone should really like, someone's probably like luring people to, to bad places <laughs> with this. Like, yeah. The, like, where does, where does the buck stop with this? Yeah, but it's kind of cute and fun right now. I, I, yeah, I remember the article being that like some kids came across like they they was like in the in some kind of body of water they had come across a suitcase that had a body in it. They actually found like human remains what? in this geo tracker thing. You didn't hear about that? No, man. Oh my That's god. Nuts. Yeah. So that was 
that was nuts. But yeah, that's just kind of like the technology that our, our youths are now engaging with. The Pokemon goes, the Pokemon goes, Pokemon go find a body. I don't know. <laughs> you back to Santa I didn't. I didn't know. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That was I, great. That was so good. Dude, I didn't know we were going to get to this topic. Tell me your 2016 about Tony. your 2016. Pokemon Go. Pokemon. I-dubs. Filthy Frank. More like Pokemon Go to the polls. Am I right? right. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking up right now? Are you trying uh, to find that body? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, once we get that TV mounted, we could have that like right over there. Teens filming a TikTok find dead body in suitcase after using, um, it's it's loading. Let's see. Yeah, it was in Seattle. Oh my god. Mm. Teens filming a TikTok find dead body in suitcase after using a popular exploring app, Randonautica. Was that what you used? No. Okay. I don't know what this was. Well, then. so Rando. I was Nautica. horrified until you said this was Seattle. Now I'm like, oh, it's every other block. Shit. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> I've seen Grey's Anatomy. A group of teenagers in <laughs> Seattle found a suitcase containing human remains near a shoreline after a popular smartphone app, Randonautica, promoted them, prompted them to explore the area. The group had been filming their exploration, posted a video to tip to TikTok, a social media platform. Yeah, we we know. Uh, user, I don't, I'm not gonna say, it, but posted the TikTok on June 20th, and it shows the group stumbling upon a small black suitcase. At first, childish laughs permeated the video as they initially think it's filled with money. A caption reads, egged on by the group. One girl opens the top and lifts it from a distance using a wooden stick, revealing a black plastic bag filled with something. Oh, fuck. And they said once they opened it, the smell was overwhelming. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's crazy. So was it planted there from someone using the app? I think so. Oh, my God. Yeah. It was planted there by whoever did it. And, yeah. Because, like, who who does this? Like, someone makes an app, and then they go out in the real world, and they, like, put little clues and shit? Yeah, I and guess. And at the end of it's a dead body? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This isn't totally off topic from, from the album <laughs> we're about to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's creepy. It's uh, menacing, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't re- read the lyrics. Is the, is the song lyrics talking about... No, just the, luring random children no, to find. No, 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 a, no, 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 no. You guys want to see a body? No, just the the <laughs> no Stephen know, the, King. The just the genre, the the country comes from. Right. The band members. Right. Doesn't it sound like something out of a Stephen King novel or something like that? Like some shit that would happen. <laughs> bless you, but something that would yeah. happen in there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But he, yeah, it's got some crazy shit. Yeah. Or I'm gonna do it again. Fuck. Get your shit together. I'm sorry, dude. I'm fine. Okay, you're fine. Yeah, dude. Okay. Yeah. You cool? Yeah, I'm, co- I'm okay. cool. Okay. Cool. Well, We're cool. You got my blessings. We're going to be cool. We're going to be cool. We're like Fonzie. We're going to be cool. What's like- Fonzie? Fonzie's okay. cool. Okay. All right. Damn right. <laughs> it's Pulp Fiction. Misquoted. Yeah. <laughs> Honey Bunny. Yeah. So I guess the cat's out of the bag pretty much with everybody in the world um, via our social medias and like our family and everything knows. So I guess it's not much of a secret with my news. You think it's a good place to say that maybe? Oh, that you're having a baby? Yeah. Oh, Thank yeah, you. you can tell them. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a daddy. <laughs> I'm going to be a daddy. Congrats. Yeah. I'm going to be a dad. <laughs> like, what if you get the wrong one? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's like no. Jeremy Renner. Yeah, <laughs> you do that too well. I did not. I did not hit the. <laughs> <laughs> great, um, but no, voice. I'm gonna be a dad, and uh, we've been holding on to this little secret for some time now. Um, it, it was a uh, really hard not to tell Brock initially, but he found out um pretty early on. But what's actually kind of cool about the podcast is that with each week that the podcast gains a new episode. It's another week that the baby is um, growing. So we're at our 14th episode this week, and the baby is at 14. Weeks. Wait, you're telling me they're in sync? Yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I thought you were going to say, what's funny about the podcast is it's going to end. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> well, all good things do eventually, but no. Uh, no. no. Not this. Not this. Okay. 
But no, I just thought that was interesting. It's just like, yeah, it's, it's that each is week. interesting. So baby is going to be, yeah. four, was 14 weeks on I wish Wednesday. I would have known that my, my parents like asked me like multiple times how far along. And I'm yeah. like, eh, it's like May, it's due. So count backwards. Yeah. So you'll know just with each episode yeah. is the same week the baby is old. Wow. It's crazy. Um, so it's kind of fun. It worked out that way. It's kind of like we're having a baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's not. Is she home? Yeah, I heard her. Uh, I heard her. Getting uh, does she hear me? That's more important. I, um, it's fine. It's fine. That wouldn't surprise her. No, it wouldn't. It really wouldn't. She just requested that you stop calling me daddy. Now that I'll actually be a daddy. Um. Well, that's a terrible argument because you're more of a daddy now. I'm more of a daddy. Yeah. So, that is true. That uh, is true. And, I, and I and she did tell me this, and I did politely say no yeah you did that i'm not honoring that and there's nothing she can do about it <laughs> okay good <laughs> she's not <laughs> i don't know how this might much... be a short episode oh that's fine <laughs> if jordan comes up behind you and chokes you out so yeah, fucking, yeah. how about now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i do have my back to the doorway not a great spot yeah not the al capone no. <laughs> well, uh, way to sit in a room. We'll put a mirror over there so you can watch behind you. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Like one of those restaurant mirrors. Yeah. The yeah, circle in the mirrors corner, in the corner. The porn TV's going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, oh, no, Jordan just texted me. I wonder if she, let me see. What did, oh, God. What did, did she hear me? I don't know what she's saying. <laughs> well, I just had to throw away three pounds of ground beef because oh. I still, oh, okay. So okay. she's ordering pizza. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but anyways, yeah, so it's a baby girl and, uh, we got all the test results back. So we had our first ultrasound, um, the second of November and I was telling Brock about it and, uh, it was in the waiting room. I was texting Brock about it. I wasn't expecting to get the full image. I was just expecting to hear the baby's heartbeat. Yeah. And as soon as they put the jelly on, you know, the jelly stuff, they put it on Jordan's tummy and they put the the thing on it, it was like, bam, it was on the screen. Like, you could see everything. And, like, flipping around, rolling around. Like, like she was just stretching, heartbeat strong. And, uh, yeah, everything was great. The genetic test came back. Everything's healthy. Um, Nice. Yeah. And that's how we found out she was a girl. We were really wanting a boy, but, you know, we're still very happy about this, too. She'll have a lot of girl cousins that she'll be able to play with, so... Oh, yeah. You are pretty girl heavy. In we, family. We, yeah, well, I'm outnumbered quite yeah, a bit. That's okay. It's me and my cat, Ferdinand, really only boys in the house. We're going to be choking on the estrogen. But, um, mm. yeah. <laughs> but we're. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> but we're, we're both very excited and very happy and glad that we're able to talk about it. Now, yeah. So, yeah. Brock found out because we shared the mutual Ear Beerners YouTube channel. And me, like a dummy, was. Google was searching in our YouTube, the ear burners YouTube, not my personal, how to tie-dye baby onesies. And Brock screenshotted me the search uh, history from the YouTube. I was like, uh, you mind uh, explaining something to me here, buddy? <laughs> yeah, I, I was kidding. I didn't actually think you were having a baby. But, I, thought, I thought you were like looking up something for like your brother to like tie-dye onesies or something. Uh, you know, no. I and thought, then I just like... I just doubled down on the joke, and then and then you yeah. called me, and I was like, "Oh, sh- why is he calling me? What the fuck?" Trevor never calls me, <laughs> and, then, and then you're like, "Uh, okay, I can't lie to you." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "No fucking way!" <laughs> I can't. I couldn't lie to you. You're my best friend. I couldn't do that. So, and that's the thing that Jordan's even said. Like, if somebody asks me point blank, I'm not gonna just gonna sit there and lie to them. Uh, I would fuck them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not their business. Yeah. That's true. But yeah. No, People you, ask me a lot of things. I don't always tell them the truth. But I told you no. I, I gave you a bullshit answer. I said no, like for whatever reason in the future, me and Jordan were talking about how, you know, if we were ever to do this, this is how we want to do it. And <laughs> we tied out a bunch of baby onesies. And you texted me back, okay, when she do. And that's when I called you. It was, I was me like, being a dick. Yeah. Yeah, it's just you being a dick. And I was like, I'm not going to keep. <laughs> I'm not going to keep trying to like pussyfoot around this. I'm oh, going to. Uh, that was my last like jab i was gonna let it go after that yeah and be like okay buddy <laughs> <laughs> no because i really wasn't suspicious yeah really no i wasn't i was just i just thought oh wait what is he ser-? and i was like I, it'd be really funny if i was just like hey is she pregnant and then she was and i'm like oh wow that yeah i was kind of i was still surprised so her sister was pretty upset at me because 
you knew before her and that that is my fault that it's dylan that i'm sorry and uh she is since i think if you want to pro- if you got a problem dylan then fucking find me <laughs> i feel like dylan could beat your ass that's i don't know what you can beat my ass but that still doesn't change what happened so i mean there's nothing you can do about it <laughs> you beat my ass all you want but it's not going to make me not know about it before you <laughs> god i've pissed off both both siblings of oh, this I'm sure. oh i'm sure oh i'm sure within still- this podcast oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, you got yeah. both my. You got Jordan and D- Dylan coming your way now. That's right, Daddy. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and it's funny because also Rachel had known because she was sitting on the couch next to you, and I didn't know. Do you have me on speakerphone? Is what happened? I just had a okay. Well, I was. She was watching me text you, and then when you um, called, I was like, <gasps> "Yeah." And she called me, and then oh. she so she put her ear up to the phone. But oh, okay. But she could have probably heard anyway. Right. Yeah, but the cat's out of the bag, so we're very excited. I've been telling everybody. The cat's in the cradle. The Silver Spoon. We, speaking of that, my that's dad, the album. <laughs> no. That's right. My dad hates that song. Why? I don't know. It's not my favorite song. I'm just like, fuck that song. <laughs> did, did he have like a bad experience with that song playing? No. Did he get like. I always wonder. I always worry that someday I'm gonna be listening to a song I love, like like a song that I really care about, and then while I'm listening to that song, I'm gonna get in a car accident, and then every time I hear that song that oh. I love, I'm just gonna think about the car accident I was in. Do you yeah. ever? Do you ever think like that? Not. Do you ever like, think that? Not like that. Has I, it ever happened to you? Has it ever happened to you? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, that uh, not quite like that dark but sometimes <laughs> like if i've ever forgotten something like i go out to my car and then i like it's like oh shit i left my wallet you know and i you run yeah. back in and then sometimes i'll stop and think wow what if if i would have left and had all my shit what if i would have been in a car accident and i avoided it and then, oh yeah and then i start thinking well what if yeah. because i forgot this i'm going to get in a car accident just kind of like the butterfly effect of yeah. like how how much the seconds and things and it changed like I think like yeah. that sometimes it's just like if I didn't have to run back upstairs from my wallet if I already had it I wouldn't have had to wait at this red light right True. I would yeah. have made it in that's time more, to, that's more more realistic yeah. way to think of it but yeah I think I I I, I don't do it anymore because I'm not as depressed anymore but I I think that yeah I think depressed. of a car accident yeah I mean I was in college when I used yeah. to think of this shit. Working yeah. at the Mexican restaurant. Yeah, you just never really talked to me a whole lot about mental health, I think. Oh, uh, well, it's because I didn't know I was. Oh. Uh, looking back, you yeah, think? Like, yeah, I was just, was, looking some, back is what you're thinking. That's some sad boy shit I was doing then. I think that was probably also, yeah, I was, you know. I, I, you were around. I was around. Yeah. I think, I feel like, I feel bad because I was the one with like all the traumas and shit. So it kind of almost was like for Hopefully I didn't like overshadow that because I had a lot of fucking depression and anxiety uh, and I made it pretty well known. I think I talked about it quite a bit. Nah, dude, you carry it well. No, yeah. man, I, was I just, carry it uh, like a depressed person carries it, and that's by trying to show it not at all. Look, at the yeah. end of the day, I'm a I'm white a, millennial college kid going to community college. I, I, I had to look myself in the mirror and say, it ain't that hard, dude. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I've had, like, one close person die to me. It's a pretty good life. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, depression no, you, isn't... You had... No, we don't need to go into my shit. No, you, you were... You don't don't feel bad. Okay. But anyways, you know, like... Yeah. I could see that now I'm looking back. But, you know, I no, think... I drink, like, fucking every day. We were drinking... Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that was the peak of my alcohol use was probably in that time in my life. Definitely. Yeah. It was, like, a correlation between time spent with me and your alcoholism. No, I mean, we drank a lot together, yeah, but I mean, did, like, yeah. but a lot of it was I fucking hated my life being in college and single most of it. And I had the worst fucking anxiety. Um, yeah, college is rough. And then I met Jordan and finally in life, you know, like I was anxious even post grad. But, you know, I think with help of the time I talked to my therapist for some time, I don't talk to him anymore, but had a therapist, um, started some psych meds, and I'm probably at a point where if I wanted to slow down on my psych meds, I could probably do it, but um, it's just because things mm, have Don't do that. You got a baby coming. <laughs> that's, that's true. Yeah, I don't fucking change it up. That is true. Yeah. That's true. But no, psych meds have helped me a lot um, with my anxiety, my depression, and things like that, but no, it's 
yeah looking back at that time man like i it was rough i tell people i got through um I tell people i got through college through uh caffeine and self-loathing um and i think i kind of minimize and exclude really? alcohol from that hey, equation alcohol dirty there man <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's missing true. something that is true yeah Alcohol is a dangerous one too, man. Because like even that concerns me at times, where it's just like, um, it could be so like there, it can be something that you really crave at times. I, yeah. I've I've realized that at points in my life, it's like man, I just really need or want this. But yeah, the worries there. I just I don't know. I I surprise myself because of how lame I am now. Yeah, I just don't want to drink. I or don't. if I do, I'm like, oh, I had my one. Yeah, That's it. I, I never overdo later. it. I never. Yeah, I. I the, for the most I have drank in a while was actually just Wednesday, and I had the most. Like, and I only had like me because they were doing a special because it's the busiest bar day of the year, the day before Thanksgiving, and. You had a DD too. Yeah, so yeah, I didn't have to drive. Things. And it's a bar that's like what four minutes away from my house. So yeah, if you get pulled over, you deserved it. It's one of the yeah so just, <laughs> yikes <laughs> yikes um but anyways you know that's the most I've drank in a long time and like I had it felt like somebody lodged a hatchet on my forehead yeah. it was bad like I, I I had to take a couple of ibuprofen and lay down like <laughs> I like I I seldom like I do drink on occasion not I say on occasion I do drink but like when I do it's like I never overdo it yeah right it, and like the the craft scene which is that bar yes uh, it makes it very difficult to have a lot because yeah at least for me i don't know like, it's always Josh busy the away, lines but, are always long too yeah so the it's, lines are long yeah. like yeah like, yeah going out is expensive but yeah i feel like you know some of my worst moments were you know in homes and home parties oh you know, or, yeah you know you yeah. don't have to like pay for your drink and I don't know. Pain, like pain, does good. keep. You're right, because you know I'm that, not going to overdo not a rule it. With of this. Thumb. I mean, there's plenty of. It was more so in college because I was broke in college. Now I have yeah. more money, and it seems like there's not really too much of a limit. I won't feel bad if yeah. I spend a little when bit you more. When you and I killed that bottle of Crown at my house. Oh my god, that was stupid. <laughs> yeah, that was dumb. I didn't even realize we did it until I saw the bottle. I was like, "Did we just just do that?" And you're like, "Yeah, yeah." Holy I'm shit! Just laying on the floor listening to some depressing ass like music like have a nice life or something we must have been in like some weird headspace when we decided to do that because i got that for you i was moving out yeah yeah Yeah. man it's crazy yeah that was awful (laughs) yeah that was great though it was a good yeah good memories but man (laughs) were they good like shit i don't remember (laughs) did we try to make a religion that day you tried to make a religion that day Uh, (laughs) (laughs) okay It's you like, tried making a religion. Yeah, I wrote a whole like <laughs> I wrote a cosmology for it or something. Yeah, you wrote up a whole script for yeah. it. Because uh, I was like, man, if I ever want to miss a day, I'm just gonna have this in the bag for my religious freedom. <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna make a bunch of holidays. <laughs> That's funny. And I was like, I have to write some lore. <laughs> yeah, that was the day you made a, a a religion. That is true. Yeah. Or what about that day where I I we had like warm blue moons and I was like I had the great idea of like. Hayden knew the drink, and I put ice cubes. You put in ice beer. cubes. In. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, have you ever had beer with ice in it? And you were like, <laughs> like it just never what? dawned on me. You were like, what? That's not something people do. It's like, no. Yeah, I didn't really think about that. I'm like, I've never had ice in my beer before. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, we're talking about alcohol and stuff. Drink responsibly, people. And if you are depressed, get help. If you are anxious, and so many people just live with it and suffer with it. And I tell you what, you know, it's a. Uh, and not not Hank Hill over here. I'll tell you what, Wally. Uh, what? I tell you what. Um just get you know, get it taken care of because I, I was so glad I did. I, I lived I was miserably um anxious and uh, and I still have anxiety. If you don't have a little anxiety, well then that's called being dead. Um because you need anxiety. That's kinda like what keeps you alive, you know, keeps you on your toes. But when it's so bad, um I went to the hospital because um one time at my internship I thought I was having a heart attack and uh, I have naturally high blood pressure, which I think is attributed to my, my anxiety. And I went to the hospital because my, my, my chest felt like it was just like I had pains in my chest and um, my, my left arm was going numb, but I think it was because I was sitting on my elbow, like in an mm-hmm. armrest. So it was pinching a nerve. 
So I went into the doctor, did everything, did EKG, they did um, everything, x-ray, everything was normal. And they were just like, yeah, you just need to, you know, just, you're fine. I don't know what's going on. The guy who was the doctor that came, was on call in there, because they told me, I called the doctors and they're like, you need to get in here as soon as possible because I gave them my symptoms. And he like, I didn't even know at the time. He like, I was looking at my elbow later. I was like, oh, that fucking hurts. He like was he ended up had like a thumbtack or something, but he was digging something into my elbow when I was in the doctor's office and I couldn't feel it at the time because my arm was numb. He's like, that's a nerve thing. That's nothing to do with your heart. Uh, and he was doing that on purpose to see if I felt the pain. He's like, you feel that? And I said, no. He just kind of looked at me funny and he did it again. Like He's like, you feel that? I'm like, I don't know what you're doing. That's one tough motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's that redhead. Yeah. Thing, you know? but, yeah. but no, and uh, after that, I think it was like a week after that. I told Jordan, "Just like I, I gotta see a therapist. I gotta get on meds because this is just not doable. Um, there's no way I can function at my job or any way if I'm living like this." And I did. And it seems, uh, it seems like since I've had it, like I run groups now, which is a lot of public speaking. Um, I'm more confident in things, you know. Um, yeah, it it really helped. So mm-hmm. get help if you feel like you need it. Don't feel like you need to wait till the last minute. Do it. I know it's hard to say, I need help. This can be one of the hardest things to do. Um, but anybody listening, do it. I encourage you. Yeah, and some people think like, they say things like, oh, it's all in my head. And somehow yeah. that's like less of a problem than if you actually like injure yourself. But that's right. in your head too. The pain yeah. is perceived in the same area. So I mean, those problems right. are equal for what you would see a doctor for. Yeah, you know your 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 brain is just like a mm-hmm. an organ like anything else. Yeah, work just because you think you have control over it. That's because that's why people think that they uh, don't need to you mm-hmm. know care about that or or that they can just solve it on their own. But you know sometimes like if you know if you're injured, you, you go and see a doctor. Say yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're just now kind of finally getting to a point where it's seen like that. You know, a broken arm is you know. It's like, think of it as a wound of your mind, right? Yeah, you know? wow. Yeah. You still have to f- heal it. You still have to patch it up. Fucking it's deep. Yeah. 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 Social worker over here. Goddamn. <laughs> I am a master level social worker. Licensed. So. Nice. It's my day job. But anyways. Your night job is. Well, day and night. Differs throughout the week. Day and night. Day I and night. Love, right. I didn't get any word right. I don't know. Anyways, this is the Ear Beerners podcast. I know we kind of diverted there a bit, but I think important conversation on mental health and uh, babies yeah. and um, other things, right? So anyways, that's just kind of what we do. We rant, uh, we get off topic, and we get off the rails. But um, anyways, today we're going to be talking a little bit more about, um, we're going to talk about Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk by Emperor. I'm going to go ahead and roll the intro music. Okay. We're like, we're like almost 30 minutes into this. Are we fucking really? Yeah. Oh my God. Sorry, guys. Podcast starts now. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) What? Bruh. No, I should have done. I should have. Bruh. I should have made a black metal version of this. Oh, that'd be cool. Last beats over. (laughs) That'd be pretty funny. And use my like shitty pocket amp to record it. That would have been. Yeah. Damn it. Next time. Well, maybe I'll just have you record the new. Um, intro because Not a new one would just. I feel like I've kind of taken the reins of all things creative with this. So if you want to make the the, yeah, I mean, but this this is your brainchild. This is my brainchild. I mean, I you came could, up with the idea, yeah. but it would be nothing without without oh, you. Hogwash. It would be Hogwash nothing. Hogwash Academy, wizard, witchcraft, and wizard. <laughs> 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 Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, we listened this week to um, Emperor's 1997 album, Anthems to the Welkin at Dusk. This is so funny. You, see, you know, last week when I picked this, this was like, so we had the three and you did that thing where you held the number and signed so your back. <laughs> In hindsight, that was so this dumb. Was the, this, like, so this is the album I'm least familiar with and it, it was the one I was least excited to, to do. Yeah. And... And that was actually number three, and I I was like, "Oh, you fucking cheat!" No, no you... I didn't cheat. Oh okay. no, this was the. I was like, "Man, why did this fucking win?" I wanted the other one, but then because the other two were so neck and neck for me, I just went with it. And I'm like, "I gotta be honest, 
Yeah. Because I'm like, well, I could just lie and just pick the one I want. I'm like, I don't know which one I want. So I'm like, let's just stick with this. <laughs> but I'm really glad I did because I, I'd only heard like one track of off this. And um, mm-hmm. Emperor's like, that's the band that like people say like hipsters um, who don't want to get into real black metal like. But for some reason, me, which fits that perfect definition, <laughs> never yeah. really got into them. Yeah, and so you said you said Emperor is the band that um, hipsters that don't want to get into black metal. Yeah, like so like if they, they like pick this. a Norwegian band, they would probably like this. Like you Fantano's see, I would think they would go the the debut like, okay. like that scene. Yeah. So I always thought it was funny. I'm like, well, why don't I really like? I always this? kind of thought like Agalock would be the answer to like a hipsters. Yeah, but black that, metal. That's a, but that's an American band, right? Yeah, and and it's always like a tough debate whether they're black metal or not. Ooh, really? Yeah. It has a lot of black metal characteristics. Right. But like the vocals. A and... lot of times, like, I don't know, if we're going off of like blast beats and like, you know. Yeah. That, I mean, the mantle, I, I can't think of Would a... you say it's more like black and. It's like post metal. Black, black and, and post metal. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the vocals are probably the blackest the thing. The mantle about is it. fucking awesome. Yeah. They, and then they ended up kind of doing like something I would probably classifies black metal but they're they're weird like some people say it's folk metal some people say it's black metal i mean i usually throw them in that category because they fit so well okay but yeah that's always a hot topic but i mean for bands that came out of norway for me i would think that like ulver with their debut would be like the 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 definitive hipster norwegian black metal album but they kind of went you know in a different direction going into electronics and pop and all this. So yeah, but yeah, the debut by emperor, uh, what's it in the night side eclipse. That's the, that came out in like 94. And that's usually what people, people hallmark that as one, like the greatest, but okay. for me, I think the vocals kill it. Like he does something different there that he doesn't do on anthems. And it's okay. like this weird, like, Wah! like scream. Yeah. Kill it as in like in a bad way of kill it. Yeah, killed it. Like that's, it, it killed the yeah, album. Yeah, like I like okay. the music, but I'm like after like a couple of songs, I get like kind of annoyed with like yeah. the vocals. The vocals in this are interesting. You know, it seems like he like we were talking the, a little bit about. Um, they're back. They're, they're kind of like yeah. subdued more. Oh, there a lot of black metal stuff. I hear it uh-huh. sounds like the vocals are just really much buried into right. the instrumental. And if what's you hear going the on. first record, it's like Taylor Swift production. right up front. From, yeah, you hear it either or. I feel like with mm-hmm. some things like this genre, it's like right up in your face, or if it's kind of hidden or tucked into the what's going on instrumental yeah. wise. Um, and one thing I say about this is that you get a, uh, 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 and it's not just the. Yeah, like the whispery kind of like you know you get a lot of the um singing you get some singing in this yeah. and you also get um different kind of shrieks and growls in it too so it's, yeah. it's a little versatile in that way but. yeah he really found a, a different voice and and even like listening to his solo stuff like which i you know he's he's still cranking out albums mm-hmm. as a solo artist but i mean he still has that signature screech yeah. Or shriek that he does. It kind of, you know, and I used to, okay. Uh, so my, my friend Tyler, let's talk about my friend Tyler for he a second. This band. He does love this band. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. It, and uh, he can actually pull off that sound pretty well, I would say, yeah. in his recordings. Uh, he does his Good. own side project. This is a childhood friend of mine. Uh, Tyler, he does, um, he has a little side thing that he does. I never knew if he um, did vocals. Yeah. Him and uh, his friend Dave would. Yeah, both, I always thought Dave did it. Dave was the more aggressive vocals, whereas Tyler was the more kind of like uh, shrieks and uh, the wispy um, black metal growl. You know, like yeah. it sounds like yeah. And Tyler does a pretty good job at it. Uh, he it, what is the the cult of the what is it dark what is it? Cult? Oh yeah, that project the Winter yeah. Chalice. He does do that. Is it? Yeah, yeah. It's the, the Winter Chalice. And it's Son of Dawn is the name of his band that he yeah, has. So, yeah, you're, I have heard that project, and he does kind of do that. Talking about, like, peak usage of, like, dr- alcohol, not drugs, but alcohol was probably that time in my life because that's what I would go to their band practices and just get fucking blasted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. Yeah. I'm not like that anymore, and that was years ago, so. But, uh, oh, my God. Look at this page. Oh, yeah. I'm on there. 
Oh, this is Encyclopedia. Yeah. Batal- You're on this. I'm uh, on there. Echoes yeah. of the Moon. People, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I have a friend from Ohio who uh, he's into black metal and like writes music too. And he like reached out to me. He's really intense at times. So yeah. he like reached out to me. He's like, bro, they got you labeled as a Christian artist here, man. What the fuck is that bullshit yeah. about? And he's like, I'm going to write to the to the editors. Yeah. And I was like, well, um, the first album actually has a lot of Christianity in it. So yeah, it's not totally wrong. <laughs> the Tower of Babel was one of your songs? Yeah, that was, that was later. Oh, that was even later. That was okay. my Falling Out album. Okay. Where I was falling out of my beliefs but the yeah. one before You're, yeah. i feel like i kind of helped with that in a way yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> but yeah, so i was like no it's not inaccurate and also i don't really care i mean if someone wants to put that they can it's kind of funny i mean um but yeah that's uh that what was that encyclo metalum or whatever is yeah. this the one one of these i featured on ah so that's it on i haven't kept up yeah, he posted some more stuff on. I got too. like the 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 double album that's mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah, mine's in my car still. I found mine and like I think mine was in my car box from when I switched cars and I'd never put the new box in my other car. Let's see how loud this box is of shit. Be. Repair your ears. Uh, oh yeah, you can't change the volume on a band camp. You can't? No. Shit. Okay, let's, let's see. Fucking hit it. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. <laughs> oh oh you know it's gonna be good if it starts off with fad be- yeah with feedback yeah this is with dave yeah this is a uh, stuff this, uh... okay i get it <laughs> you don't like it what are you i can't hear you <laughs> is that better yeah i think i get it though <laughs> <laughs> it that sounds good. uh it's good it sounds like dark throne yeah yeah blessing of vampire good, good howls yeah so um oh he didn't credit you on the um yeah that's a good question um he might have i'm not sure no i credited you i know you did i'm yeah. sure he would have i just can't see I was really? just saying, I had credited you. Oh, here's all their discography over here. It might have been later than that. Darkness of other Vampirian uh, acts. Don't featuring. Huh. Concubine of Shadows. Well, he's, he said he's written, written like a hundred albums. Forsaken Reverence. More releases. Holy shit. The Embrace of Wintry Spells. That might be the one that I might Who's be doing his artwork? This is, those are nice. Yeah, I don't know if he gets these off the internet or if he takes, but they are cool. Yeah, uh, it's a very, very black metal. <laughs> I think I remember this song. Yeah, is this with like all the violin freakouts? I think so. Yeah, this one was. Uh... <laughs> That's Dave, right? What? Is that Dave? Well, that's actually Tyler, but uh, Dave playing guitar. Yeah. Anyways, we can go back to uh, Emperor. <laughs> Sorry. I just want I wanted to see if I could find my guitar solo because I just I layered in a bunch of uh kind of what I got a lot from uh this Emperor album, a bunch of dive bombs into it. So like, yeah. There's so many dive bombs. Oh my this god, album. <laughs> this album is just dive bomb city. Bro, it's 90s, man. This was like that was the Get shit. Get your pole. Yeah. Fucking Dimeback Daryl. Yeah, did you did you look at the history of this band? I have it pulled up here. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you want me to read it? Uh, you can. I mean, I was going to tell you. but oh, Okay. It's uh, a Norwegian black metal band formed in 1991, regarded as highly influential by critics and emerging black metal bands. The group split up in 2001, but reunited from 2005 to 2007 for a few festival dates and brief U.S. tours, and again reunited in 2013 and 2014. Emperor reformed for the third time in 2016. The group was founded by Isan. Is that how you say his name? Isan. 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 Uh, wow, he's a cool-looking guy. Uh, guitar vocalist. Yeah, he's and, awesome. And Samoth. Yeah, he's cool-looking, too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, they uh, Ison was like 16 or something when they started, and yeah, like, just super young, and like you know, they're part of the that scene with uh, you know, all the church burnings and all that, yeah. I saw never participated in any of it, but I mean, he had this like weird persona at the time where he's like, yeah, this is a good thing. And later mm-hmm. he's kind of like the one who I feel like from the scene is like really distanced himself the most. So, mm-hmm. I mean, people, you know, want to call him a poser and all that, but he just seems like he's, you know, he's like said a lot of times, like this has been the product of my youth. Okay. But that, Samoth yeah. did burn a church down. Oh, great. After their first album, I think. And the drummer went to jail for murder. Oh my god! So he and he didn't get out till like 2003. So, so. They, they followed the the footsteps of this is what you do if you're in fucking black metal. You burn yeah. churches and you murder. And the yeah, and the drummer like the drummer says it had no connection to black metal, but I mean he he killed a homosexual man. Like he lured him out into like the woods. Oh, I think I've heard you tell me about this. Yeah, before. and he, yeah, and like late. Uh, like, recently, Danny Phil from Cradle crazy. Phil said he told him this story and he thought it was a joke. And then later he got arrested. Oh, he did this with Varg. So in 1994, yeah. Samoth was. Yeah, we know Varg. Oh, yeah, Varg. Uh, that's from uh, Burzum? Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, yeah. I remember some of these things. In 1994, Samoth was sentenced to 16 months in prison. That's a slap on the wrist, man. Mm-hmm. In prison for burning, scheduled, scold. Church in Vinny Ford, Ford to get like it's all Welch, I think. I, I, I can't say Norwegian. this. Norwegian, Norwegian, yeah. With Varg, yeah, we all know Varg. There's his face. Yeah, fucking. Varg. The arson was committed during a pause in the recording of the Burzum EP "Ask," mm-hmm. which means ashes. Where Samoth performed as a session bass player. Ask literally has like the picture of a church he burned down on the cover. Is that? I think I've seen this cover. I think it's Ask. I have seen this. Yeah. Yeah, that's infamous. Yeah. I have seen that. Wow, that is infamous. Wow. And then their bass player got was in prison for assault for two years after their first album. So that's why they had three years between this album and the new one. Bunch of crazy motherfuckers. Yeah, but the that guy never rejoined. The drummer obviously never rejoined. So they got a new guy, and then Samoth came back, and you know he's distanced himself too from yeah youthful. Man, that's fucking crazy. (laughs) It is crazy. So like these are kids like you know you'd go to high school with it like yeah went this far yeah with some of this shit. My God. Samoth was leaning toward a futuristic death metal sound. Uh, wait, uh, I was that's not where I wanted to start. Back up. Yeah, yeah that's, at, that's a, when they broke up. So yeah. after years of playing an emperor and being featured on various black metal side projects, Samoth, in conjunction with Isan, decided to dissolve Emperor in 2001 due to their differing musical tastes. Mm-hmm. So he was going for more of a futuristic death metal sound influenced by progressive metal. It's probably Samoth. And symphonic metal. Samoth. Samoth, whatever. probably. Like a Aboth. Abat, abat, abat. Yeah, which man, I'm pretty sure. Uh, has Immortal kept it clean this whole time? That's crazy to believe. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. Their music videos are so hilarious. So. They're they're <laughs> just running through the woods. They're funny. Yeah, that's that's the band you think of when someone's like, "Yo, you like black metal?" Or they think of Burzum. So it's either they're like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, it's this you know this funny looking guys that dress like Kiss in the in the right. mountains, and their the guitars obviously aren't plugged in." And yeah. or there's a uh, this racist piece of shit who's burned down churches and killed people and yeah or killed a person. I it guess. looks like uh, Isan and uh, some uh, they they formed a band called Thou Shalt Suffer in 1991. Um, yeah, they did like death metal. Yeah, <laughs> but interesting. was Isan of the of this group of people? Uh, was he kind of like the the more cl- like squeaky clean of them? Like, did he do anything he, crazy? He didn't. I mean, he like the worst he did was when he, like initially. I think before the prison sentences, I'm pretty sure like there's like an interview where he's like all dressed up and the you know mm-hmm. like they were the first to were one of the first to use like corpse paint, but then they were like the first band to like stop using it. So he was always like, I guess I don't want to say ahead of the curve on it, but like. I don't know. He he is uh he was kind of for it like in the early nineties and then yeah. later was like uh yeah, I was kind of a kid then. Yeah. But he 
I don't know. He seems like a pretty cool dude now. I mean, like he never got arrested or anything, but I mean, it's it's weird to like, like, know that like most of your friends like did all this and like right. I don't know, like that the drummer, the original drummer, has like played with them before since getting out of prison, and that's kind of caused some controversy. Yeah, um, you know, even though he's like, I guess served his sentence for what right. Norway constitutes for murder, which is a uh, much shorter than. Mm-hmm. You, the sentence you would serve in America. I mean, even Varg right. himself got the maximum sentence of 21 years. Yeah, which is crazy for cold-blooded murder. Yeah, who did Varg kill again? He killed the the guitarist from Mayhem, Euronymous. Uh, yeah, and I saw Euronymous on here. Yeah, which uh, allegedly Euronymous was coming to his house to kill him. Yeah, I remember that. There was like a whole bunch of different shit going on yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. There, but there's... Varg. In self-defense, stabbed him like twenty-one times or something. Oh my god! Which, yeah. So he was murdered by fellow musician, former bandmate. Var- like you can go yeah. down a whole oh my podcast god, episode of just, a murder podcast. Yeah, you know. I think murder. I think a murder podcast I've listened to actually did cover like all of the different <laughs> crazy shit that was going on with There's these bands so back much. in the day. Um, but people just like fucking burning churches and murdering one another. And, and then that mayhem album where it's literally just. Uh, fucking um death's brains yeah dead dead's yeah. brains just uh yeah well he's dead so it's it sucks it's too because fucked, man it's we have crazy. to like we have to talk about all this just to get to the music which emperor in my mind is still a little removed at least for this album because like yeah yes some mots on it but other than that i mean it's they they're it's definitely the more mature like time in the band's yeah. life that's the church they burned yeah. Jesus. It's pretty. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not, it's I mean, I like not. that a bot interview and he's like, we never burned a church because when you burn it, the government builds it back up and they take your money. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, no, we never got into those extracurricular activities. Yeah. So Hassan described himself as a Satanist in the 90s. As he explained in 94, he considered Satanism to be hard to define as there are different ways of Satanism and to be more of a category the individual would have to set for themselves. He considered most other adolescents to be soulless people, too involved in materialistic things. Uh, there's something to be said about that. He said the imprisonment of the emperor of other emperor members had both positive and negative effects and meant a difficult period for the band, but the imprisonment also gave him publicity and therefore more possibility to spread their ideas. Yeah. Isan additionally has said he has seen no reason to be physically destructive and has had no personal connection to the church burning cases that rocked Norway. Right. In 1994 an interview, I saw him described a social Darwinist. He's 19 here, so he's got our yeah, bullshit college he, ideology he, right now. Yeah, he's he's the kid from the Dead Kennedys who thinks that he knows the world and everything. And yeah, yeah, something like that. Figured yeah. everything out at a young age. Maybe that's a little too far, but whatever. Uh, he described himself as a social Darwinist, influence on his Satanism, calling himself anti-Christian, and saying it's not for a weak person. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, while also expressing respects towards European paganism, meditation, and stewardship of the environment. Uh, he's additionally condemned acts of criminality and other forms of religious intolerance, such as the aff- aforementioned arson cases. So, like, you know, Satanism at its at its core isn't, like, violent. It's not like, let's go, you know, burn shit. It's like, if anything, it's more forward-thinking. Like, I'm not a Satanist, you know, but, you know, from whatever I've seen Sounds of them. like it. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, he <laughs> at the same time, he, like he did not participate in any of this, which uh, I think by their standards would make him the nerd. OK, yeah, because like he, he really still seemed like he was in it for the music. OK, otherwise he probably would have like engaged because it seems like Varg was pretty willing to take people along with him to do this shit. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's why they're an interesting band. And, and like mm-hmm. the other thing is like. I think their debut even was still more musically exploratory than some of the other albums coming out. I mean, you, okay. like if you compare that in in this album to like Dark Throne's Transylvanian Hunger, I mean, there is like I don't know, like Dark Throne is so much more simplistic in what they were going for and what and what that being like the the uh you know the one of the greatest like you know examples of black metals like that mm-hmm. those dark throne albums but then you get like this album which did come out a little bit later and it's just i don't know it's just leaning towards prog 
yeah more so than than black metal but it's still got that that kind of edge to it yeah and i think that's why like i think loudwire magazine like re- regards this as one of the greatest black metal albums ever oh this one right here or g- greatest metal albums ever yeah anthems to the welcome at dusk yeah. oh and, really and, and the wow. lead singer of judas priest has also said this is his favorite metal album oh really uh-huh that's crazy yeah, it is good. Uh, we haven't talked really at all about the music here. We just kind of talked around it, but um, yeah, I really liked listening to this. I uh, it was funny. I was but I was decorating my work office with Christmas stuff while listening to this. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> it was like you know decking the you know I was putting up uh, decorations on my office door and just listening. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, this this was a great album. Uh, and just kind of track by track, you know, a lot of stuff has its own uh, things going on in it. Um, yeah, I really like the intro track here. Um, I like the the, the intro is really pretty. I wasn't expecting it, it, is, it threw me off. Yeah, uh, quite it really a bit. Takes you through. A, um, yeah, a trip. I was not expecting the album to start the way that it did. I wasn't. Ex- I was expecting it to go into um, you know blasts like pretty quickly. The first track. <laughs> yeah, or the but second track. No, like. It was pretty. It was, uh, you know, it's a really beautiful intro. Very well. Um, yeah, the guitar here. Yeah. It kind of reminds me. Uh, it, it's just really. Uh, I like the owls in the background. Do you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. It kind of makes you feel like you're at like in the woods at nighttime. Kind of like a mysterious. But there's also that eerie thing going on. Yeah, it's, it's got, a really beautiful little guitar. It's kind of harpy, you know, like like you know, like a harp. Uh-huh. Uh, it makes me think kind of like the Great Fairy Fountain from uh, fucking um, Legend of Zelda a little bit, but it's it's really cool. And then it just starts doing the uh, yeah, yeah, like the growling yeah. stuff, and then it yeah, it's it's a choice. It's 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 a, it's a choice, it's but interesting. it's interesting. And then it does this turn here, yeah. But the, the one thing about this track that is interesting to me is the. In this album, in general, the synths that are in it, um, pretty cheesy. Oh my god, you just so, took it right out of my head. Yeah, it's, it's kind of cheesy. It's got some cheese on so, it. Some of them are okay. Some of them are. The, at some the end of the, this track is probably this the is most, cheesy. The most laughable. Af. I, I I felt bad, but I did audibly laugh the first it's time. It's goofy. It, it is. Yeah. Because everything's like really epic leading into it, and then you just get Don't these the like core, yeah. like beginner core uh, keyboard sounding since yeah yeah uh, overall though i think it, and compared to the debut i mean this yeah. the synths are used pretty sparingly and the music other like um orchestrated stuff that they have going, like one of these um tracks is actually just completely instrumental orchestral oh yeah and that's I, the uh opum uh opus I as, as you, satana. Though, the so the album really ends with the wanderer those are bonus tracks oh really yeah, you so did text me that. Yeah, after after learning that, I just quit listening to the last couple. Oh, really? I'm like, well, this I is really them. where the album ends. Really, I I did like these. Yeah, I wish Spotify would make a note of that because, like, the Wanderer just it it to me that's that's the ending. That that feels like a good ending too. Okay, that makes sense. Even though the last track, like, yeah, you could you could end it on a on a symphonic track like that, and that's and that's fine. I liked the I I liked the Wanderer, but uh, but but that like is a, an example of them actually being able to use. Um, good. It sounds electronic. A mm-hmm. lot of the uh, it sounds synthesized. I'm not sure if they use actual orchestration for this. Maybe some instruments, but probably not. I don't play keys. But the keys, like like, and then the choir, I think is probably keyed in too. I don't know if that's actually yeah. there too. It sounds kind of keyed in, but it's still beautiful. Like the the chords and the progressions they make, and it's epic. Um, it has a big, they have big crescendos and go back down and kind of go back up. And, uh, um, but there are moments like in here at the intro track where that synth is like a sore thumb. It's just like, I can even go to it. It just, it sounds like, uh, <laughs> it sounds like. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's cheesy. I'll say there. There's only a couple moments where I do think it's cheesy. Like but as the uh, other instruments are on top of it, it doesn't sound as bad. But isolated on its own, like at the beginning, it's it is cheesy. Sorry, I interrupted you. What you're saying, you um, like the only other like moment where I think it's really like just the sense is like in I think ensorcelled by chaos, which I don't yeah. mind them there because it's just it's more strings. But when they use right. like horns, like they're doing here, yeah, that's when it starts to kind of get a little yeah. More, 
But I mean, for at the time and but this is cool sounding. I like the the marching snare and the. Uh, this is cool. It it's just that synth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, this is kind of why I don't listen to a lot of like other symphonic. Yeah. Metal albums, which I'm not sure how much I would consider this that because it doesn't lean on it as heavy as those other it bands. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a crutch for it. Right. Where if you listen to like, I don't know what's another, like, uh, I don't know, everyone picks on Dimmu Borgir, but I, yeah. I think a lot of times they actually do use real instruments. Yeah. Uh, maybe the early stuff they don't, but I'm like, well, it's cheesy, but a lot of it sounds okay, but. It's just sometimes it gets a little over the top with it, like the drama, yeah, and, and the theater of it. Ooh, where sometimes yeah. that can kind of take away from like the edginess of like what the genre is trying to do. So when you those sometimes can compete with each other. But okay, this record here, I mean, this is you could skip that first track and like you would just get pummeled with some good black metal. You can, it. but I like I the I do really like the first track. Um I love the the it, it sets the scene. Yeah. of kind of like being in this wooded area it sounds like and you know it you know it I love the the use of the owl hoots. <laughs> yeah. And uh yeah, it's definitely atmospheric. The the whole thing is atmospheric. But and was it the second track here, the Yi? And I didn't uh, uh, respond to you, but you said you were trying to learn how to play this one on guitar. Yeah, this and Transemprium. It was yeah, it's a fun one. Um, I I could play most yeah. of it. It's just so fucking fast. It is really fucking fast. It's, it's, a lot of these things are cool, cool to kind of listen to, and how they squeeze in these fucking pinch harmonics while they're doing all this oh my shit, God. dude. Which, so what, which which song? Yeah, which song is it that it might be this one? But there's one where the riff is literally like, dun, 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 dun. it's like it's just constant pinch harmonics throughout. Is it uh, the Lost in Curse of Reverence where it it's might like be. The, they're doing that little triplet and it's like, yeah, it's, it's that so one. Cool. You know what I'm talking about? I watched about. them do it live and it, and I think they really got their chops down later on. Yeah, and they did it. Yeah, they yeah. It I is, love the change up on this on that first track, on this one here. Yeah, when it when it this here. No, when it. This part, because it, it there's like we're a at change. forty seconds into yeah, yeah. The da -da -da, that, <laughs> the the way they do things are really cool. There's a cool um, I think it's the third track, "Thus Spake the Night Spirit." There is a riff in it that has such a cool chromatic um, it's like a chromatic triplet they do. It's it uh, we'll, we'll listen to it, but it's really cool. It, and that's the thing I have to say about this album is you're listening to it. It's fast, but it's not arbitrary where they're reaching for the notes. They're not just trying to play fast for the sake of we can play fast. Yeah. It sounds like there's a level of we know what notes we're reaching for. It's not like I'm just, you know, whacking off the fucking guitar. Just, right. You know. What's cool on first listen is like how like just impossible to decipher a lot of it mm -hmm. is and how like it just it does sound like that at yeah. first where you're like it just sounds like they're just fucking playing a bunch of noise and like the and you know yeah if you're not used to this type of mix and raw mm -hmm. recording which i think i would like to have seen this with a more polished production and i don't say that often with it comes with black metal but i think right. there's just so much instrumentally going on that, that you don't get to see all of it because of right okay or you have to really pick it out which is maybe that's the point but the the riff at one fifty five of this song is what I was trying to learn, and it was so fucking hard to play. Let me see, like at speed. Yeah, after this. Yeah, it does this, and then once yeah. it kicks back in. This is a track. This was the the riff I was talking about. Talking about. Yeah, it's so fucking cool. It is this. Yeah, this is the riff I was thinking of. It has. It's like, it's like chromatic. Yeah. It's, it's not really clear like what's happening. Like, I watched the, the do this whole album live and I, I was like, what the fuck is he doing on the guitar? He's like sliding up and I'm like, whoa. It's yeah, it's very much chromatic kind of on the on the higher notes strings of the guitar. It's so cool. And then they had it harmonized there too. Yeah, that, there's a harmony on the low end. Yeah. That's really cool. 
Yeah, that was actually the riff I wanted to learn to play too when I was listening to it. I was just like, That's funny. and I did the same thing in my head. You know, we're both guitar players. Something's happening here. <laughs> I was, I was in my head looking at like something, like picturing a guitar, and I was like, "What were, what would that look like?" <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like it's just yeah. I think it's just chromatic. I think, but it's so fucking cool and. uh because you wouldn't think like something that's simple sounding could be played in a way that's just like how the fuck do you do that? It, yeah. it, it's really cool. Yeah, once you once you get it, it's yeah. it's pretty cool, clear. But I'm like, yeah, I've never thought to do that either. Yeah, but I guess like I've never really wanted to play something this evil sounding either. It's it's really cool. Yeah, I love that. Now the first I listened to it, so I was like, that's a fucking awesome riff. I had a hard time finding it again. This song here is just. It's just, I don't know. It, yeah. It's almost like a what to expect on this album. Yeah. This is your guide, man. This is your teaser. Is, yeah. What to expect. And even this part here, yeah. it's so simple. It's just literally like going from E to F. Yeah. Yeah. But it sounds so cool. Yeah, it does. Because they're playing the entire, you know, they're playing yeah. the entire God, chord and not just your, the power your, chord and. I know it's all tremolo picking, but how the fuck does your wrist feel like after playing that? Dude, like, what about the drummer's feet? Oh my god, I always wondered stop. about drummers. I'm glad I was never a drummer because I think I listen to music like this, and I'm like, man, what was that? Would that be like? Though? He has like one break this entire album. Yeah, that's like during the synth part of like "Ensorcelled by Chaos." Yeah, I did. Re- I did research to see what the word "ensorcelled" meant, and it's bewitched. So, oh, so it's, I thought it was like a portmanteau, like. Like in Trans Imperium, like uh, that sounds like a poor man toe. It's like an Imperium to what a what a fucking what a poor man toe. A poor man toe. When you like combine two words, a poor man port man toe. The fuck are you saying? Port. It's port man toe. Pork. Port man toe. P o r t m a n t e a u. The fuck. It's like. I thought you were saying poor man's toe. No, poor man toe. Like, like, what, what, what literary... does that have to do with a fucking poor man's toe, dude? It's like when you take two words that don't actually go together uh, port- and you put them together. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, did you fail English? <laughs> I've never fucking heard of that did before. You fucking take phonics? That would be fucking mean to me, man. A port- <laughs> fucking pork man's toe. Port. P O R T. Not K, not pork man. <laughs> port man. <laughs> T E A U T A. Uh, it's all it's all one word. <laughs> yeah. Fucking, I've never fucking seen this before. It's a it's a bag. No, it's not. Okay, it's, it's a just, bag. <laughs> shut, the, shut, the, shut the fuck up. Portmanteau or portmanteau. Gee, it's, it's some fucking stupid French thing, I think. No, it is. It's a large trunk or suitcase, typically made of stiff leather and opening into in two equal parts. But then it's also. A word blending the sound and combina- combining the meaning of two others. For example, motel from motor and hotel, or brunch from breakfast and lunch. I didn't know that about motel. Wait, what? You're oh shit! You're right. I didn't know that either. Man, my brain it can't handle all this shit. <laughs> a portmanteau. Get- Thought you'd learn a literary concept by emperor. Why does it sound like a poor man's toe? I thought you. I, I seriously was thinking you were fucking Joey Diaz here, fucking talking about <laughs> a poor man's toe. I'm like, did I just break you? Like, what the fuck did you just break? Are you stroking out? <laughs> Why are you talking about? I have the problem. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's maybe my problem. I, I think that everything else around you me is wrong else before is a fucking idiot. before I look at myself. <laughs> no, it, more more times than not that I've realized in my life is that I'm the fucking dumbass in this situation. So this this that's checks out. That's not true. Just right now, you are okay. okay. <laughs> God. Oh, dude, is my mic okay? Like, am I picking up the sound? Because I realize I'm pointing it like it's I, a- I was gonna mention to you, but it looks like we are getting good sound waves. But I, I was gonna tell you, but I wasn't wanting to be a. Uh, oh no, you should have. You can fix adjust it. I'm gonna adjust it now. Or is I gonna go, fuck go in up? A, no, oh, go in and adjust it. You're fine. There you go. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. But it was picking me up okay? It was still picking you up. Jesus, man. It's a microphone. You're talking into it. I was so. just like d- d- berating you for this word. And literally, I'm speaking. Yeah, it's fine. I, I think it'll be okay. Okay. 
Okay. I think it'll be okay because it would be the same if I were to talk into the top of mine, but it, it's, it should be okay. All right. Well, so yeah, um, I like that song. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the Spake, The Night Spirit. We haven't listened to that one yet, but we like uh, Yay and Transeparium. We haven't listened to The Spake, The Night Spirit together yet. Yeah. So. This song, I think, is... I think the the keys really Intro start fanfare. to take their own here. I mean, they do... Yeah. They, they are on the second track, but yeah. they, uh, I think they have their own little... They have more of a place carved out. Okay. Like... Dun, 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 that dun, intro, dun, that dun, scream right here dun, is cool. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. That growl, let's go. Shriek. He does this all over the place. It's crazy. He's like, <laughs> yeah. So is Isan the same? Is is the vocalist too? Mm-hmm. Okay. He plays yeah the guitar. Yeah, this part. I like I like that. That part is cool. That is cool. It's not. It, it, it's the not, guitar's going. Dun, 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 dun. It's so cool. They're dancing together. Yeah. It is cool. And this has that one rift. It's like. Uh, around one thirty. Okay. It like does this little like kind of fill thing. This part. Hmm. That is cool. Yeah, this part. Yeah, one thing yeah. I do have to say about the guitar work in this album in general is that it is really good. It's uh, it, yeah, it is nice. It is good. Um. You can tell there's definitely some great musicianship happening here, and it's not it's not an amateur. Right? It, it's great. Yeah. And not to say that like the early black metal releases are amateur, but like just there's just not as much going on as there is here in a lot of those albums. Yeah. A lot of it, and it was purposely simplistic because it was kind of this response to like death metal being too technical and. And they just wanted to get this raw ferocity of the, you know, their environment, and mountains, and hating yeah. Christianity, and so like a lot of times their riffs were like pretty straightforward, and but like Dark Throne used to be a death metal band, they can fucking play, yeah, and then they decided to like just strip it back. So you know, once the late nineties hit, and Emperor was like, let's fucking go for it, yeah. Am I too loud? No, you're fine. Okay, it just since you turned your your mic back the correct way, it looks like it's actually picking up. So more up a little better. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, just keep that in mind when you use that mic, just to yeah, direct it daddy. the same way I put mine because they're basically the same type of shape. So what's funny is like I was like, why isn't it my thing like turning correctly to me? Like I had a fight to get it in that position. Yeah. When I could have just done it the way I've done it the past like three weeks. Uh it's okay. It's we okay. figured it out. Okay. So, okay. I'm not too worried about it, but okay. no, this this track is cool. I like how it is. Um, it seems to be a little bit heavier. The synths, yeah. I do agree with you. Seem to be. I like the the little stings it has. Of the synths jumping in and out of yeah, here. Little stings. I like it. Then at around three ten, I feel like I was just there. This part had to have inspired Wolves in the Throne Room. I haven't listened enough to them to know that reference. I guess. I listened to it with you, but like I can't like remember specifics of anything of like wolves in the throne room. I don't. I know, know you love them, but I, I have, yeah, they're probably yeah, they're, yeah, they're up there for me. I'm trying to. I don't even know what song I think this, this sounds like. It yeah. just sounds like something they would do after like a big ferocious burst of energy. Yeah. No, but this yeah. this part's yeah. epic here. Yeah. I like that. Slowing it down a bit. The drummer's yeah. getting a little bit of break here. Yeah, a little bit. He's on blasting. Anyways, I just started blasting. <laughs> I gotta say though, this this album took me a this while cool. to like. Really? Uh huh. Is that you've been saying that a lot about a lot of the shit that you pick? It's just like I liked it. If, I, I like it now, but it, honestly, it took me a little bit to actually really like it. I think what? you said that about Ulcerate. I think you said that about um, Ko Dot. Ko Dot. You yeah. said that about Ko Dot. You said that about. Um, I think you said that about um, fucking um, Alter. I don't. Mm, I don't know. I could no, be. I, think I, I could always be like them. slandering you with that. You are slandering me now. I think I did. I didn't say that about Alter Plagues. <laughs> fucking up okay um <laughs> well i think it's partly because i really like melodic like yeah. pretty riffs and there's not that 
really here. It's like it's yeah. mostly pretty evil. So I think like especially compared to like the other two albums I thought about picking. This is were, really you, you, this is a good sorry. This was, this was a this was a left field for me. I would say like cuz like a lot of times I like like the Swedish sounding black metal or death yeah. metal and it's always like very melodic and you know every, all the notes are you know in the scale that it's in it's usually like that minor scale i really like and mm -hmm. you know same with like you know a lot of those bands inspired like the later metalcore bands like Azale dying and kill switch where yeah. all those guys kind of keep it mm -hmm. pretty melodic for the most yeah. part so so to like go to something super like evil sounding i was like it's not totally in my wheelhouse to do that so I, I i was always i was curious this week to like to see what you would think of this because i do i know you kind of like the more evil i really stuff like the like, more evil sounding you know, stuff the danny too. elfman type I love, there's stuff. definitely some danny elfman yeah. type of stuff so in like, here Trevor too. might like it i'm like the only thing that might deter him is like the production no i i, I don't mind the production on this um if, if yeah, anything, once you get into it it's, it's pretty i've in recent you know, like I, I used to be a big thing about like if it sounds not well like produced, I, it, I'd stray away from it. But I think like I don't know if maybe it's just from all the time I spent listening to old Dead stuff or like uh, like Grateful Dead stuff and things like I really have appreciation for and like the time I spent with Tyler and and probably stuff like like I don't it doesn't bother me. If anything, I really like that raw, um, growling, fuzzy tone now, right? Yeah. Um, and that's just used to be when I was younger, I used to be a dumb kid and I used to always bash the things that sounded like that. But now as an adult, um, you really get a lot of character, you get textures. And I say textures a lot on this show because, um, you don't get a lot of texture in things that are way overly produced. Yeah. You get artificial textures, but like, I think texture in this is like, the the growling of you know whatever analog thing they were using or you know like of you know the string and the the fingers on the strings and things like that like you get more that that grain that yeah and that's yeah and I I felt like that for a while I do like some when mm -hmm. it when it works I mean like I certainly don't think like gent music needs to be produced like this i think right. part of the appeal is like you know hitting those low tones and yeah and you want that a little bit right uh sometimes they go too a little too far where it's like is this even a human doing this at this right. point yeah um yeah so i mean there's definitely some give there but like it especially like if i listen to like a newer black metal album that's mm -hmm. uh trying to think who like Who's a, who's a good example? I mean, I don't normally listen to like a lot of the, like of newer stuff besides like maybe some American bands. Right. But like there are some bands who still wear the corpse paint and yeah. and do this style, but it just sounds too too polished. Yeah. And I um, I don't know. The drums are just too yeah too fake and yeah. But no, I, I yeah it, it didn't turn me away from it. Oh, I was good. just I was just thinking of another example. Like imagine you're you're looking at a painting and you're like, huh, this is an interesting painting. Was this made by a person? In this <laughs> type of case, you can see the brush strokes. You can True. you can see it's not yeah. digital where it's all blended and smooth. Yeah. I, I mean I've been going through that too, like pulling out my old amp versus yeah. using my digital fender Mustang. Yeah, where you know they sell you on. Well, you I can use have plugins. Every single sound yep. you want, but and I'm using like, computer plugins, you know, and uh, and even then I can get kind of a. But I have noticed, like, a, I like the sound I get using that, but it is digitally, you know, yeah. rendered. And, it took me a while. I'm like, something's missing. It's yeah. like I don't know. Even the mistakes they're like added back in mm -hmm. to like the, the getting that guitar tone. Yeah. So I mean, maybe one day we'll get there, but I'm just I'm not sure. If now, we will. if you're doing what the fuck, um. Uh, <laughs> what uh, God, it was like what the one of the third. I think it was like the third one I album I chose. It was uh, I can't think of it. The microphones. If you're it, as long as you're not doing that fucking thing where you're, <laughs> you're plugging the microphone, the guitar into like a tape recorder that's in like rammed up, you know, the ass of some like I don't know. It, it it's yeah that tone. Have it's, you listened to Burza? <laughs> No, I know you liked that in the microphones, and this isn't the microphones review, but that sounded like dog shit, <laughs> and I that, I stand by that. That was dog shit. 
That's funny. You can't fucking hear it. You don't know what the well, fuck's have happening. Heard, uh, have you heard Dark Thrones Transylvanian Hunger? <laughs> yeah, I've heard of it. Pull that off real quick. Just okay. All you need is like five seconds to like get an idea of what yeah, we're dealing with. I, I, I hope I, I don't get canceled for saying the microphone's guitar tone is dog shit. Because it's fucking fuck him. He probably knew it was dog shit too. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm not saying it's not dog shit. It's just dog shit I like. <laughs> I like the taste of it. It's 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 uh it's no, shit, dark, but it's dark, warm. Dark right? throne. Oh, that's Burzum. Yeah. Thank God. Hi Varg. <laughs> hey Varg. Yeah. Dark. So I mean, this is a uh, one word. Yeah, pull up tra- yeah, Transylvanian hunger is probably the first one. But this is what the uh, like, like just listening to this compared to what we what we're talking about. Oh my god! Yeah, that's so flat. But I, I, I do like it. There's like no EQ to that. Yeah. And what's funny is like this is, this is their third black metal album. And like each time yeah. it seems like they're like, let's pull back something musically out of this. Yeah. Because like the first record, uh, what an iconic photo too. This like, one? Yeah. Yeah. But like Under the Funeral Moon is pretty clear still. Oh my god, this is yeah, it's you're so right. primal. Yeah, it is. But like we just have this riff. It's super simple. Yeah. And this was kind of like, you know, becoming the staple. Yeah. And then a couple years later, you know, we have this Emperor album. Mm-hmm. And there's just you know, like you you could pick up a guitar and play that entire Dark Throne album by sight reading the tabs. Yeah. With no problems. This, I mean, this will take forever to learn everything. Oh, yeah. Gotta say, I love this fucking riff, too. Oh, the oh. Ensorcelled by Chaos Riff? Yeah, yeah. It, it right off the bat, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. And and I like the synths when they come in. This is a pretty synth-heavy song. When it's, dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, dun. it's so spooky. This is probably one of my favorite off the album, just because it is the drive of it is awesome. It starts off epic like that. Yeah, this is this is sick. This is. Yeah, if you want to like piss off a party and you want to like change, <laughs> take over the tune, take the ox and put this on. I mean, it's just. And then after that, put on the entire Terrapin Station medley. Exactly. In its entirety. Yeah. Yeah, this part's cool. And I love how like this little like piano part, this dun dun dun. Yeah. It was uh, in. It was earlier in the song that they pulled this out but it was during the dun 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 part Mm -hmm. and i think it's cool how they like they removed that part and then Mm -hmm. they added the piano as they kind of came back to this little motif yeah which is examples that everywhere of like yeah um just the fact that they thought very carefully about like Mm -hmm. what riffs they're going to use and where they're going to put them and then just like having different takes on it throughout the song yeah it's like you have this yeah that's kind of that Danny Elfman sound too, too. Yeah, yeah so it's like a, kind of like a theremin almost, like a yeah. like space sounding. Like there is that in there. You're right. That is a really cool part in this song, though. That's badass. One forty into uh, "Ensorcelled by Chaos." Then there's that piano. Yeah, but and then they like bring it back. The later. drums are epic behind it too. Yeah. And that's so simple. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, I like the guitars. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Dun. Yeah. Like everything's like yeah. has its place in like the, the the orchestration of it. I mean, it's very like very thoughtful and like everyone's kind of doing something. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that this one's probably one of my favorite on the album. There's another track in here that I really do like. Um, and it just because the intro is really um epic and i think that's uh with strength i burn i know this is hopping over a oh, couple dude that whole song is but this no, uh, i think it is this one no i'm thinking of a different one but was that an acclamation of bonds i think it is no it wasn't it was not that one i am thinking of the wanderer <laughs> oh the fade in yeah i like the fade in it's cool yeah and it, it Knowing that this is the last song, it really does make sense because it felt like weird. To, I'm like, why do yeah. they have this like fade in, fade out song? And then yeah, we, and then the song after it, I thought was so bizarre because of it's like verse chorus f- format. Yeah, but, the, but it's a bonus track, so kind of knowing yeah. that it's like, yeah, I, yeah. 
but this, that's not what I was thinking. I guess but, wasn't the Wanderer either. No, it was the Wanderer, but I just I, I just had all these mixed up in my brain. Uh, um, but the loss of curse of reverence is where we. Oh, this is the one with this little trip, this like pinch triplet. That, oh, that's the one we were talking about earlier. Yeah, it's so crazy. It's awesome though. <laughs> Don't you know? Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, this. This is cool too, though. But <laughs> yeah, is that cool? It is so cool. Yeah, take note, Zach Wild. <laughs> it's so cool. Dying to dying to dying. Meanwhile, Ison's just going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's like throwing up on the mic. But that is such a cool riff. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. And I a lot of pinch, pinch harmonic stuff can get annoying after a while, but it's not like too yeah. blatant in your face crazy. I mean, it is blatant. It's in your face, yeah. but it's not like I'm annoyed of it. And then right here, I love this like mm -hmm. this part. The, I the, love the choir low guitar going. Yeah. yeah, it is moving. Da, 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 da. Yep. Everything always is moving. Like it, it's, it seems like there's always movements in it. There's like, it's never sitting like, still for you too long. Need sheet music for this. Oh my gosh. Like it just gets insane. Like it does. Just the ascension. But this, this is where I was kind of talking about earlier when we were when we were goofing on the uh, the synths earlier because it does have times in it where it does use the synths really well. That it's it's really atmosphere like here. Yeah. It it doesn't sound cheesy. It sounds good. But I think to your point, it works best when something else is with it. If it was isolated, it would sound. Yeah. But in Source of My Chaos, it was isolated, and I think it was fine. But I okay. think it was because it was a. It careful. wasn't the horn, I don't think. It wasn't the horn. The yeah. horn is what's like... It's like these low-end, bassy, like, cellos. That yeah. I think it's what made it fine. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the break was nice, too, to kind of have some some more variety, which I think on the... From a high level, I mean, there's not always a... Like, you wouldn't think there'd be that much variety just from, like, a first listen. You'd be like, wow, every song kind of sounds the same, and it's all kind of muddy, and there's yeah. no bass, and... But um, I don't know. Once you really dive into it, it sounds pretty. You know, there's a lot to pull out, and yeah. Um. What? Oh yeah. So I think I like. <laughs> I got. Yeah, I got to learn how to do that. In a song, I think there's like a weird, plucky, cheesy synth line. I made a note of it. Yeah, it sounds like a banjo almost. But it's not. It's like but it's kind of cool though. It goes well with what's going on. Yeah, I don't hate it. I was like, eh. but I wrote at four thirty. Yeah. I go, woo! <laughs> <'Cause> I <laughs> love the there's like this cool change up. Yeah, but that's like, woo, <laughs> rich. <laughs> Get your pole. Oh yeah, this riff. Yeah, and this is a simple riff, but I really think it fits nice. Yeah, <laughs> fucking dive bomb, man, man. These fucking people probably had to tune their fucking Floyd Roses every like five minutes. <laughs> I would have, I would have shot myself having to do all that. That's not funny, but that's it. It's yeah. When you have a Floyd Rose and you're pulling those crazy, crazy dive bombs and things like that, your guitar is going to go out of tune so <laughs> fast. And then you have to string them and tune them. I, I have a, it was my brother's Ivan as, and I, I told you about it. And, uh, it's got a, the Floyd Rose on my Schecter is a lot better than the Floyd on my Ivan as. Interesting. And well, the, I guess that makes sense. Schecter is more expensive guitar. Yeah. And this is an RG series. It's a rare RG series, just given the design of it. But the fucking Floyd Rose on it is a nightmare, fucking nightmare. And I, I pretty much bought something on Amazon. It's like kind of like a brass uh, pin you put in the back of it. And it keeps the, it, it turns the floating bridge into like basically a hard, like a, like a solid bridge. So uh, it's not floating anymore. I could bend it up, but I can't go like, I can't like, no, no, I can't, I can't bend. I can't tighten it. Like you would do in like a dive bomb. I can bend it down just like you would do in like, just like a strat. But yeah. I, yeah, because this way I can string it and tune it and lock it. It's got the lock um, on it still, so that's good. But 
I just wasn't fucking with it anymore. Man. I was going to pull my hair out trying to restring and tune this this Floyd Rose. And I've never had problems with it with my Schecter. Once I learned how to do it with that, it was easy. But every time I've tried to tune her, and that's when I listen to this, I just hope they have good guitars that they're doing this with because, oh my God, man. Yeah. Doing that with, it, it's so much, you're well, throwing your guitar, it's so out of tune, you're fucking up every, it's just, it sounds cool, but yeah. I've not had a whammy bar on a guitar in so long. Yeah, most of mine that can, I just leave them off. I don't, yeah, I can't even put it on anything I have. Yeah. I had that stage, though, that everything I did had to have. Like, I loved doing dive bombs. They are fun to do. Fuck yeah. Yeah. They got they got overdone in music after yeah. a while. But, I mean, yeah. that's, when this came out... Yeah. Well, I had a huge Pantera phase, and I wanted to, everything to... I wanted to learn how to play almost everything in dime bags, you know. Yeah, so I, I was doing a bunch of dive bombs and shit, and I thought I was mm. Billy Badass, but... Because you feel like it. You're like, Meow. Yeah. Gets you excited, and then yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, yeah. Other than that, I mean, that song, solid. Yeah, the theming, solid. Next track is interesting. I really like the drumming. Of Acclamation of bonds. Yeah, this to me is probably the weakest track. Which I mean, it's okay. hard to say like that there is a weak one. Yeah. Um. But. Yeah, I mean, there's not really any duds in this in this uh, album. No, not really. And I didn't even know the last two were um, bonus. Yeah. Well, the last, not just the last two, but the last, well, the one is a live track. And I really like Opus A Satana because it is just nothing but, um, but that going back again to that fucking dive bomb. Did you hear that yeah. shit? <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, the drumming's really cool in here. There's a lot of fills and shit. Yeah. Trills. Trills. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds good. What's up? Are... What's up, Rotendo? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Maybe the the keys are really present in this song. Yeah. But they're they're not, they're not unwelcome. Going back to your last album pick, like I and listening to this, I just want to like storm a castle or some shit. And like <laughs> it's like takes me back to like that fantasy feeling of like slaying dragons and 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 uh you know D D type characters and things like that. I don't yeah, know. It's definitely got that castle feel to it. Yeah. Yeah, like I got this from when we listened to KO Dot. I put around 155 to two ish. I love this like the the they do this like descending part on the on the riff and it goes perfectly into the next section. I think I know what you're talking about. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this. That's so cool. That's a cool groove. Yeah, and it's like little back and forth between this and this like spooky part. Yeah. It's super cool how they like they kind of like add different things each time that goes around. But it goes back and forth between this and the next part. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. <laughs> just overall, I love the noodly guitar riffs they have in this. It's just it's it's really cool. And it's pinchy. <laughs> Very pitchy. The only thing that's interesting that I took away is around 415. Yes. Oh, is this like I thought I was listening for to For Whom the Bell Tolls. Dude, I thought the same fucking thing. Oh, man. I thought I was alone with that. They were no. Like, they were the boom. Watching. Yeah. Yeah. Dun, 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 that, yeah dun, I was, dun, dun, I was dun, waiting dun. for that. Yeah. I'm not alone in that, dude. I was thinking the same exact fucking thing. No, I was waiting to burn out dinner. That's what I was waiting for too. You're right. I oh, you I mean, I'm a nerd and I listen to the commentary disc for yeah. a Dark Throne album and like there's like That's so fucking for whom the belt holes, but yeah. There's there's another there's a song that Fenris did where he's like, Yeah, this is fucking Metallica right here. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not very long. 
Right. No, it doesn't. Like, it only just, lasts for a few is seconds. It's just like a little, like a, they're winking at us there. Like and a nod like, or something. Yeah. Like that. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, I mean, a lot of black metal is just mm-hmm. 80s thrash worship. So yeah. it doesn't surprise me that they throw yeah. a nod in there. For whom the bell tolls. Yeah. Do you think we'll ever review a Metallica album? Um, we could. <laughs> I mean, maybe like. I, I mean, know. that's probably my favorite Metallica album right there is uh, Ride, the, Ride the, Lightning. the Lightning. Yeah, yeah that's, that's it's got the bass. Yeah, yeah that one. Yeah, Ride yeah. the Lightning's. A, yeah, that's. That, I I spent a lot of time yeah. with that <laughs> and. <laughs> yeah, that's a yeah. dope album. I kind of want to listen to that one again, but yeah, it's fucking good. Yeah. Damn it, it ain't right. And Something then, like, else controls. Aside from me. the Wanderer, like. What strength they burn is like our climax. Like this is the Yeah. The uh the opus. What strength they burn is? Yeah, I mean this is just a fucking That was the other thing with listening to this album is just like I had to keep looking at my phone because like I had to say, Oh, we're on a different song now because yeah. it's like, holy shit, switch songs. <laughs> yeah. So it's hard for me to keep track of what happened and which because I'd listened to it through and I'd be like, are we in a new song now? And I look and we're like, are you 30 seconds into the next one? It's like, what right. the fuck? <laughs> yeah, this song's sick. It like it's a perfect circle too. I mean, yeah. like we go back to this riff, even though we kind of abandon it like yeah. the first minute and a half. And about 125, that's when we go into like this galloping, like um melodic kind of part. And like this is where the most singing is. Yeah. But yeah, I think that's yeah, I like this like this in it riff at the beginning. Um oh and I sit my favorite. Well, I don't know my the the second track probably has that my favorite riff, which is the chromatic riff, but like also like in this song is another fucking awesome riff. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, like right here, this is where it goes into like the gallop. Mm hmm. Yeah, that was yeah. cool. And he sings a lot, and it's super interesting that like there's this much singing on an album like this. Yeah. Like it's, and he's got well, a pretty good voice for it. He does. He does have a good singing voice. Yeah, because normally, like, I, I wouldn't really like to hear someone singing. But I think because he, he just has like this. It's kind of good cadence to yeah. it. I mean, it's it's medieval, but it's not cheesy. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty strong, too. Yeah. I like it. And I love how the guitar will, like, kind of go along with it. Yeah. Like, like right well, now, well. with that tremolo going on. Yeah. I wonder if, if like... Um, and this is going to be a really chuggy kind of really stupid take. But like when I listen to this, I, I, I wonder how much influence like um, bands that came after this. Maybe not so far. Like like bands like Avenged Sevenfold. I wonder if they listen to this because like I get maybe. a lot. Of, I get a lot of you, you know, what I'm hearing like maybe the sounding the seventh trumpet era, maybe um, uh, waking the fallen era. Yeah. I Kind of the melodic guitar. Kind of the, kind of going, yeah, because yeah, they, they choose like those kind of diminished sounding. Yeah. Like, kind of notes yeah i mean i grew up kind of listening to that too so yeah. and like this this isn't like a an underground album in the right. world i would so say i'm sure this had to have had some influence i would imagine yeah i don't like what they did with this album if, they, <laughs> if that is what happened but right. um i mean i can't i can't say i wasn't influenced by event sevenfold growing up either, oh I was, so. abso- absolutely i was <laughs> yeah um yeah, I mean they do this for a while. Um but at 550, I think this is where like the song fucking explodes. 550. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I haven't learned this one yet. <laughs> I like the vocal choir in the background too. That's cool. Yeah, that's a nice touch. They yeah. really notice that. And yeah, overall, I mean, 
it's this band's only put out four albums, which is kind of something I forget sometimes. But wow, um, yeah, and I listened to the one after this, and I thought it was okay. But that Prometheus album they did in two thousand one, it's got a lot of death metal, and it. it's super proggy. Like, yeah, they went they went really hard in like a lot of noodly sections. Like I think you'd really dig it too. Okay. Yeah, the Wanderer is just your kind of lullaby, but it's it is probably cool. going to be a nightmare you're going to go to sleep to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, like, I like the Wanderer. Nice it was a nice. It was a nice closer. I agree. Another Wolves in the Throne Room feel for me from that song. Yeah. I didn't realize. I guess I should have read your text. I didn't see that this was kind of like the ender of it. I'd like the Opus. Yeah, I mean, if you like them, then a Satana, because yeah, it's that's... just a nice. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes I think bonus tracks like fuck everything up though. Okay. But, um, yeah. That's why I said it. But I don't yeah. think they really do. I mean, the song before this, like the, I forget the name of it. Uh, oh, the In Longing Spirit? Yeah. It, it has this like, I, I wonder if it's a cover actually. Cause it just seems so mm-hmm. different from what everything else was. Like it's like verse, chorus kind of. Mm-hmm. And it has the big build up. Yeah. So you want to go splitsies on that on that uh, <laughs> box set they have? It's only like three thousand dollars. How many thousand? Like three thousand. Three thousand. I don't know if Roughly. I want to. Christmas is coming up, man. I don't know if I want to spend. I don't know if I want to listen 1, to their, their their demo recorded in a tin can on a vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> just the needle yeah, is like, fucking jumping yeah, up and down off the their room. first yeah. uh, their first uh, demo, like Wrath of the Titan or Tyrant. It's on here, yeah. and it's just like. Just oh my god, the fucking re- production is yeah, and he's just like a fucking menace on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I mean he was like I don't know, sixteen, seventeen, yeah, when he when they did the demo. It's awesome out- artwork for them though. They're- yeah, the first album, the the artwork is amazing. The that, which album the, in the Nightside Eclipse, the first one. Oh, this one here. Yeah. But put on like um, one of the, uh, the uh, let's see. Oh, uh, cosmic keys to my creations. Put that song on and like I. This is probably one of my favorites. Oh, that's but, cool. Um, listen to his vocals and tell me like. Oh shit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like a lot of people really like this album. And yeah. It's like the the vocals are really killed for me because other than that, I really You're, this is when you said this is the one you said the vocals killed it. Yeah. Okay. I, I think the I think I like the production on this better though. It's more full, but it also kind of sounds like they have like a wah pedal in it. Yeah. It's like wad out is what it sounds like. <laughs> but it sounds more uh it's more simple as far as music yeah. goes. There's they they lean on the keys a lot heavier. Yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree with you. That's that sounds like you're yeah. going like it sounds like that, but and but yeah. uh pull up uh, his solo stuff. I I son I I H A S H N <laughs> and uh yeah okay. and the afterlife I think the album is called I really like this one uh, uh afterlife you said it's the album uh or kiss I me mean, after, after here They're after yeah I don't know I said afterlife but oh play, you um you sent me this yeah. yeah they play like the first track and like like it's I think you really dig this this is just his solo stuff mm-hmm he kind of said once he. Oh, that's cool. Well, he said once he was able to get like his own recording equipment and like you know once you know mm-hmm. electronics really took up with music, he like just decided to go solo. Yeah. And he also had a project with his wife called Pecatum. I think I heard of that. Yeah, yeah. Paul let me borrow a CD of theirs oh, okay. back in the day. It's interesting artwork. It's interesting that he like he still has the same screech, but the music so different mm-hmm. like Arctis is that like Arctic is what that is oh that's cool yeah that's awesome yeah it's... I fucking love that 
That's fucking awesome. Yeah. That's completely different. That's like completely different than what we were just listening to. Mm-hmm. It, even this the is Prometheus, badass. Even the Prometheus album, it's got some really cool shit. It's a little... Um, it's It sounds like... Um, what you would hear, like um, somebody from like a, like a. It just sounds like modern. It sounds modern, yeah, yeah, like a modern metal. But I love this. I might have to spend some time with this. Yeah, I think you'd dig it. Um, and he like has a lot of guitar playthroughs. Like he's really into like the guitar world. Yeah, type. He's really talented. He's a very good guitarist. Those squeals sound just like <laughs> yeah. what it sounded like in a. Yeah, it's like yeah. a. It's like a nice, I don't know, it's still, it's got nostalgia, but it's also, I mean, it's 2010, so, I mean, it's like, yeah. oh, wow, it's like pre-gent. For 2010? Yeah. Oh, my God. I wouldn't have even thought this was, this guy was ahead of his time. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah, because it's very, you know, a lot of bands like that coming out of this time that kind of do this polyrhythmic type. It's like a better bullet for my Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> Like better of that, but yeah, no, I'll have to check this out. This is awesome. But I, as far as the other, uh, as the album we came here to review today, I don't really have too many more thoughts on it. I think I, I shared a lot what I wanted to say about. It. I really liked it. Um, it was definitely a, a switch up for me. It's not all the time I listen to black metal, so no, it was, it was awesome. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. And like for as much as I dove into the genre to not really spend time with this, um, yeah. I, I mean, I get why. I even have the CD. I bought it like years ago, mm-hmm. but I I, and I I think I put on the first track. Thought that was cool, and then for some reason, just never came back to it. And um, yeah, I don't know, it, was, it was it was nice. I mean, I, I I definitely see why it has was so influential and made a big splash. Yeah, still not sure why I didn't really listen to it when I would like I own fucking Dark Throne albums and right all that. But I, I mean, there's just so much that came out in that time to consume that maybe that's why but i mean it yeah it and and being someone who likes more i don't know songs that kind of drag out parts maybe longer than others maybe that's why i didn't really get into it because there's a like definitely a lot happening and a lot of change-ups and all that so yeah. i mean i mean i'm, I'm kind of i'm for it now but maybe that's why then i, I really didn't spend much time here. And the first album, yeah, the vocals, like I was like, yeah. <laughs> but but other than that, that album's great. Yeah. And I and I think, you know, you know, you might get crucified for saying like that I don't like the album or the vocals are funny, but <laughs> yeah. They sounded better when on their demo, because he had the same vocals, but because everything sounded like shit, it sounded like it was like this is fucking crazy. Oh my God, he's, he's like losing his mind. Yeah. But, but it got a little more polished and then mm-hmm. there he's doing this. And I mean, if people like that, I mean, just look at like the style he's done since then. And I mean, he obviously wanted to change his voice for one reason or another. So um, maybe, maybe he didn't like it either. (laughs) (laughs) But wow. Yeah. (laughs) It's funny because I was, Rachel and I've been playing Battlefront a lot. So I like put on. Oh, you've been playing with her? Yeah. So the the old one. But so I've been putting music on. But I can put like, I put on this entire album several times and like mm-hmm. she hasn't said anything, but then I put on the first one and she's like, I, I don't like that. <laughs> I'm over this. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And, and you know, yeah, cool for her for, you know, being able to sit and listen to that. <laughs> this is in general. Like that thought's pretty cool though. Yeah. yeah, well, you can, I, yeah. If I said, let's sit and um, do nothing and just focus on this, then yeah, that'd, that'd be, be different. different. That'd be different. We're playing, but we're playing a game, a game together. And, and yeah. She gets really into it. So maybe she can That's tune cool. it out or whatnot. But mm-hmm. um, I think she'll be, I think she'll appreciate me listening to something else, maybe mm-hmm. with, because um, I feel like this sounds really good with headphones and pretty good in the sound bar, but in the car, I feel like it's, it's hard to really. I listened to it in the car. I wasn't too bad, but it's more like, it's more when you're like riding with someone, you always have it quieter. Yeah, I could see that. So when it's quieter and it's like, I don't know, you're not focusing as hard like pa- to passively listen to it. I think That's it's true. probably more annoying. So I think she'll appreciate me putting something else on. Well, for- one thing I've learned in this experiment that we've been doing with this podcast is like the time that I listen to this, like, well, my drive for work has gotten a lot shorter. So that hasn't been for me a great opportunity for me to listen. It's been more the time that I set aside specific to listen for the show. 
and I got to block that time to do it. Yeah. And it, yeah, if I had still lived in, in, you know, where I lived before I moved, it wouldn't, I would be able to get this done any, like in a day. Yeah. Easily driving, just driving. But now it's that I have to actually spend, like put time aside and which is fine. It's, it's great. But putting that time aside to listen to it. And I think doing that is a lot different. Cause like you said, it's not passively listening. It's, uh, you're, you're devoting the time to like, be mindful in the moment with the mm-hmm. music. And um, that's been a fun experiment for me uh, to be able to practice that. And, uh, you know, not yeah. having it on the background, but being mindfully listening in the moment to it. Right. Yeah. There's some albums you can put on the background and you can kind of get your thoughts together. But like this, and and I think the only other one that's like, what's mm-hmm. difficult is Ulcerate because you have to really... Yeah, the part the timestamps and do all that work. Yeah, that one did, that one was a lot of work. We didn't really do that with like Tyler the Creator because I think it right. was easy to like pinpoint what we were talking about. Yeah, what was happening. It was I agree. Clear. I agree. Like this, I'm like, oh, 155 to 158. I really you like really that have to dissect it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyways, um, that was anthems to the Welkin at dusk. I liked it. And uh, it was nice kind of uh, because I've heard of Emperor quite a bit and I've heard a lot of stuff in kind of this. And uh, it was nice to actually spend a week listening to it. And uh, yeah, this was a long episode again. We went, uh, we're about 145. Fuck. Yeah, man. Good conversation, though. Um, So I guess that leads into what I'm going to pick for this week. And I was really struggling this week with this. I, I ended up going back to defaults on my list I had made at the very beginning of this podcast of kind of like ideas I had. And um, I feel like we've been kind of doing an interesting pattern of metal and um, uh, I picked Tyler, the creator last more of uh, you know, rap hip hop kind of stuff. Um, I want to listen to this week um, an artist that me and you have actually listened to quite a bit together, but only one of their albums. And you had it on vinyl and uh, we, we played it quite a bit playing, uh, Grand Theft Auto, uh, we're going to be listening to MGMT's Little Dark Age. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I didn't have this one. I had the first one. You had, uh, uh, what is it? Oracular Spectacular. Yes. Yeah. We listen to that all the time. That's a funny album because they like fucking hated mm. the songs. Like they made them as a joke in college. Yeah. So yeah. And, and then they Little got Dark so Age popular. I wanted to make. Yeah, so that's why I'm interested in listening to it. I want to check it out and uh, dive into it and see. I think I've tried playing a few seconds of it and I turned it off. I can't remember Uh, why, but let's see how it goes. Okay. So we're going to listen to Little Dark Age by MGMT uh, this week. And then next, uh, this coming weekend, uh, we'll be back with some more ear burners to burn your ears off. So yeah, yeah. bitches. Yeah, bitches. (laughs) Anything else, Sprock? Anything? Anything? No, 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 no. Emperor, don't, don't burn churches. Uh, don't burn. Don't, yeah. Only burn ears. Yeah. Yep. Keep, keep track of your kids, man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to raise your kid on Emperor. <laughs> Daddy, I like black metal music. <laughs> no. It's like that meme. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> no, stay Billy, away from- stay away from that. I don't want you to be influenced. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah, no. Kids covered in corpse paint. <laughs> just not now. Like, you're 25 years too late. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Well, that was your Earners. We'll see you next week. Kisses. Kisses. Can't we get so off topic? <laughs> I know. It's okay. Dun, 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 dun.